Okay, it looks like we are still in for the long haul. District Court Defendant Lobby Number Two. Sorry, Epworth. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. <laughs> Don't worry about it. This is my problem, not yours. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. Wait, Detective Gumshoe. What is it? You've got a lot of nerve, pal, making a detective run all around while on duty. And to top it off, you call me here? I've seen happier people at funerals. I take it Lana's having you run errands again. Let me tell you, this is the last time, pal. Here, she asked me to give this to you, if there was a break in today's trial. Evidence law. Edgeworth is talking about this the other day. You must know the two rules of evidence law. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. The chief prosecutor. Also wanted me to give you a message. A message. She said, if you're planning to take him on, you're going to need this book. Him. I guess I'll need to give this book a thorough read. Doesn't look like that book will do you any good now, though. All that's left now is the chief prosecutor's sentence. That's where you're wrong, detective. Hmm? Haven't you figured it out yet? Why I'm still sitting in the prosecutor's seat? Despite all these allegations being thrown at me, Mr. Edgeworth, the real trial today hasn't begun yet. What? What else is there left to do? Your credibility has been all but ruined with this forged evidence you were unaware of. Emma Skye found out she unwittingly caused a man's death. And now you're telling me you want to do more? You've got to be kidding me, pal. You're missing the point, detective. Lana didn't murder Detective Goodman. She merely stuck a knife into his dead body. That means the real killer is still out there. What? And we're going to expose him. No matter what it takes. This case has hurt too many people. It's time to bring it to an end. February 25th, 1252. The latter part of the trial. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. The inquiry committee is planning to impose harsh penalties for your action. Uh, thank you for the news, Your Honor. Yes, well, <laughs> normally this is where the prosecution calls forth a witness, but, uh, <laughs> God. this isn't easy to say. You see, there is some concern that you, Mr. Edgeworth, may have, uh, struck a bargain. You think I may have manipulated the witnesses? I didn't say that. It's just, you see, everyone's been talking, and... Very well, Your Honor. I have a solution. A solution? That being the case, the prosecution will allow the defense to call forth all further witnesses. What? There's no precedent for what you're proposing. Undeniably, this is an unusual arrangement, but a very effective one. It would prove that I haven't struck any deals with the witnesses. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? Unbelievable. Edgeworth has found a way to continue the trial. Very well, the defense accepts the prosecution's proposal. Then it's settled. The, uh... Defense may call forth the next witness, Mr. Wright. You do realize this is your last chance. If you call the wrong witness, this trial is as good as over. The defense calls. The time to finally bring out the real murderer. 
you. Damon Gant. The defense calls Damon Gant to the stand. Did Damon Gant? What does he have to do with anything? As the defendant's partner two years ago, Mr. Gant has first-hand knowledge of the crime. I feel we should hear what he has to say about it. As luck would have it, he should still be in the courthouse. He would also be the least likely to have been manipulated by me in any way. Wouldn't you agree, Your Honor? True. All right, Bailiff. Please escort Mr. Gant to the stand. Witness, please state your name and occupation. What is this? Some kind of practical joke? I was just on my way to lunch. Your name and occupation, sir. Worthy, are you serious you want to do this? Your name and occupation. So, you want to play hardball, eh? Please, Mr. Gant. My name is Damon Gant. I am the acting chief of police. Now then, Chief Gant, the court requests to hear your testimony. Right, oh, what's with the grim face? First, let's clear up this SL9 incident. Oh, you mean the time when Lana's sister murdered the prosecutor? Personally, I think it's been made pretty clear already. There are still some things unaccounted for. Oh, like what? Like the role you played in all of this. Son, either you're very brave or very foolish. You are aware, of course, that all police chief, that a police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons. Sure, take my testimony, for example. I don't have to give it if I don't want to. What? Is that true? I'm afraid so. The chief of police has the right to refuse to testify. Of course, such an action carries with it certain risks. Don't worry, I'm not here to hinder your trial. Just remember. If this turns out to be a big waste of time, don't say I didn't warn you. Very well, the witness may now begin his testimony. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. To make a long story short, we slipped up. The pow that power adage didn't help either. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Apparently she had already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. Is that when Dark was arrested? Him? He was lying on the floor unconscious. When Emma sent Neil flying, it seems Dark bumped his head. I see. Everything seems pretty clear cut. If the police chief has the right to refuse to testify, then I'd better hit him hard and fast. Present the unstable jar or evidence list on his fifth statement. One. Oh, what is his fifth statement? As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. You claim you had nothing to do with the forgery, but I'm afraid that claim, that is a claim you can't back up. Explain yourself. Several pieces of evidence were found in your office. Take this list, for example. That's a list Emma Sky drew her picture on. This was discovered in your desk. Not only that, but a piece of this jar that was sitting in your office was found inside your safe. It was found where? 
You see, Chief Gant, these articles of evidence uncovered in your office are both concrete proof that you also played a part in the illegal investigation. Chief Gant, what is the meaning of this? Oh, he is a defense attorney who may even rival Worthy. So you admit to it then, that you were involved in the forgery? Who, me? Or do you mean you? Me, why would I have anything to do with that? Well, you were the one who snuck into my office when you found this evidence. Prosecutors aren't the only ones capable of forging evidence, you know. Defense attorneys can do so, too. Isn't that right, Righto? However, Detective Gumshoe was present during the investigation. Worthy, my boy. Not even detectives are exempt from the law. Rest assured, Dick will receive his due punishments. Wh what? Salary drops any further, he'll end up paying to work. Yes, well, in light of the detective's presence, please give us your testimony regarding these pieces of evidence found in your office and their relation to the forgery that took place at the crime scene. My, my. Kids these days no longer know how to put two and two together. Oh. Okay. Um, so I'm just reading how to, because this is, ob I'm obviously trying to get through this now. Uh, I could have presented the cloth, but because of rule two of uh, evidence law, it wouldn't work. Let's see, what was it now? A jar fragment and a list? For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. Anyway, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I'd part participate in a forgery. Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Wow, that... Oh, Jesus. Yes, Your Honor. When investigating the crime scene, you should have been more careful to observe protocol. You do understand what I... That I am chief of police, right? There will be consequences. Oh. Indeed, I believe I will press charges so you won't make the same mistake again. My apologies, chief. But would you mind waiting until tomorrow for that? Today is, well, you know. All right, Aji. In return, though. I know, I know. That place, right? Why are these guys telepathic? Okay. For all I know, you could have planted them in, in my office. Anyways, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I'd participate in a forgery. Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Really, Chief Gant? At the very least, there is one very large benefit you'd reap from all this. Oh, I wasn't aware. What is this benefit? That would of course be the position you have, Chief of Police. Oh. The resolution of the SL9 incident secured your promotion to Chief. That in itself is sufficient motive. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Ah. Uh... Do you really think that I'm incompetent? What do you mean? Even without that case, I was already in line to become the next chief. The resolution of SL9 merely sped up the inevitable a little. Is that true, Edgeworth? Yes, he was going to be made chief anyway. 
Be careful when pointing that finger or you might wind up being the one pointed at. So that means there's only one possible motive for you to commit forgery. If you didn't do it for yourself, then you did it for someone else. Don't be silly, Worthy. You know me better than that. There are only three people I look out for. Me, myself, and I. That. There. It's out in the open now. IG, would you mind if I changed my testimony a little? By all means, please do. I wouldn't be anyone's accomplice if there's... If there was nothing in it for me. It. Nothing in it for you? Sorry, but the only person I care about is yours truly. That girl, Lana's little sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, you'd better think again. You're right. You don't feel sorry for anyone. Be tough on crime and tough on people. That's how I was raised. You seem to be lax enough on yourself, though. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a good one, Worthy. Hmm. Could there have been something in it for him? Given his selfishness, would he have helped someone out? True. You might not help out anyone for their sake, but if it would benefit you, you might decide to assist someone. Mr. Wright, it appears you're positively determined to portray the chief as a nice man who likes to lend people a hand. That's not what I mean. Very well then. Who is the person you believe Chief Gant may have helped forge evidence? Prosecutor Lana Sky, the the defendant. I believe it's quite obvious in light of the circumstances. Emma Sky fell in. Emma Sky fell victim to an unfortunate series of events. Who would want to help her more than her own sister Lana? And as for Chief Gant, he would also have a reason to help Lana if she asked him to. That reason, of course, is self-profit. Self-profit? What do you mean? After the SL9 incident was resolved, Lana Sky was appointed chief prosecutor at the prosecutor's office. The person who arranged this job change was you, Chief Gant. But, but how would he profit from all of this? He would be able to use chief prosecutor as his puppet. Essentially, he would acquire unchecked authority over all investigations. You mean to tell me that despite the chief's formidable appearance, he plays with puppets? Oh, wait. You must mean puppet as in someone forced to do her bidding. Never mind. Admit it, chief. You assisted Lana Sky in forging evidence. Your motive to appoint her as chief prosecutor so you could control her. Right, oh my boy, you have quite an imagination. Let me ask you something. What? Do you have any proof of this? That I controlled Lana? For example, is Lana testifying that I've done such a thing? Lana. She's keeping quiet to protect Emma. There's no way she'd testify against Gant. I'm afraid without any proof, this all amounts to nothing more than mere conjecture. Unless... That is also what happened in this incident. This incident? Er, uh, which one would that be? Of course I'm talking about... The murder of Detective Bruce Goodman. The Chief Prosecutor has been acting strange throughout this entire trial. Almost as if someone had been controlling her. Worthy, you'd better watch your tongue. I wouldn't want you to get hurt. What, just what do you mean? What he means, your honor, is that Chief Gant is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Not only that, but the Chief is now making Lana take the rap to cover up his involvement. Wh wh what? what 
order, order, order. I said order. Mr. Wright, you, you can't be serious. Huh? This. This is an affront to the highest ranking officer in our law enforcement agency. To accuse the chief of police of blackmail and murder. That's a, a, impossible. Except I figured that out a few hours ago. Your Honor, I was merely reiterating what Mr. Edwards said in easier to understand language. It's too late, Mr. Wright. There's no turning back for us now. It looks like he's the one who's decided to go through with this. Can you prove this, Mr. Wright? That the chief, a high-ranking officer of the law, is involved in this murder? Good question. Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gant is just a man. The question is, is he a criminal? I believe the evidence will tell. I see. All right then. Let's see what Mr. Wright's got, and it better be good. Show us the evidence that ties Chief Gant to the murder of Detective Goodman. The ID card record. This is the ID card list. Yes, the one that shows who entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. There was one ID on the list we couldn't determine the owner of yesterday. Seven sevens. Sorry, but there's no way you can prove that is my card number. It's your number. What? How do you know that? The safe in Chief Gant's office requires a code to open. A seven digit code. Seven digits. You don't mean. I'm afraid so, Your Honor. The code was seven sevens. The same as the remaining ID card number on this list. Chief Gant, you entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. Order, order. Chief Gant, what do you have to say? Nothing. The defense is search of my office was in violation of regulations, and I will demand Mr. Wright will be punished to the maximum extent of the law. But right now, this court demands an explanation from you about the use of this ID card. Chief Gant, so you admit, you entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. What about it? I'm chief of police. Whether it's the evidence room or the bathroom. What's the difference? I can go where I, anywhere I want. Tell me, when you entered the room, were you alone? I always go to the bathroom alone, as I do with the evidence room. Detective Goodman wouldn't have happened to be with you that day, would he? Of course not. Why would he be? I hadn't seen him in days. Objection! You hadn't seen him in days Chief Gant, I'm afraid you've just undone yourself. On that day, you had to have met with Detective Goodman. What do you mean? This trial's purpose is to determine Lana Sky's- No, it isn't, Your Honor. This trial's purpose is to determine the truth. If Chief Gant met the victim on the day of the crime, then we need to determine one thing. What transpired during that meeting. In that case, Mr. Wright, I'm going to have to ask for evidence. Show us proof that the victim went to meet Chief Gant on the day of the crime. The lost item report. Take that! Detective Goodman lost his ID card on the day of the crime. Or, to be more accurate, Jake Marshall stole it. So Detective Goodman filed, filled out a lost item report. He would have had to give that report to the Chief of Police. Yet yeah, you are in possession of the report, which means you can't be sure if he filed it. He filed it? How do I know, you ask? 
because he needed to enter the evidence room that day. He needed to? Yes, to transfer the evidence out. Oh. Detective Goodman took the form to you, Chief Gant. Then, you accompanied the detective to the evidence room. I accompanied him. There's no other way the murderer and Detective Goodman could have entered the room. Hold on, let me guess what you're going to say next. I, the chief of police, murdered poor Goodman. Exactly. But wait, the chief didn't necessarily need to accompany him to the evidence room. He could have just lent him his ID card. Yes. Now that you mention it, I believe I might have done something of the sort. Sorry, but that's not possible. According to the record, your card was only used once. Yet you showed us your ID card earlier. If you had really lent it to the Detective Goodman, it would have been found on his body. Yeah! Chief Gant, you, you didn't! The murder was most likely a spur-of-the-moment crime for no one in their right mind would choose the police department as a place to commit murder. After the murderer, you contacted Lana at the prosecutor's office. Why? To dispose of Detective Goodman's body. You're forgetting, Mr. Wright. The victim's body was discovered in the prosecutor's office parking lot. How did he manage to move it there? I was at the police department the entire day, you know. And everyone aware of Lana, everyone's aware that Lana stayed at the prosecutor's office after the ceremony. Everyone except me, it seems. Still, you're the chief of police. You have an entire police force at your disposal. Oh, so you think I just ordered an officer to do it? Hey you, take this here dead body over to the prosecutor's office. I don't think so. Chief Gant, you left all the evidence we need to prove how you moved the body to the prosecutor's office. And all this time, I thought it was a useless clue just taking up space. How could the chief have moved the body? Mr. Wright, show us the evidence. To move the victim's body, Chief Gant used this. I think it's the tool. The screwdriver? Take that! This is how he moved Detective Goodman's body. What's that? A screwdriver? What does that have to do with this case? Mr. Edgeworth, think back to the day of the crime. What is this screwdriver doing here? It's here because... Ah! Oh. I was asked to go by Chief Gant, no less. He told me he wanted me to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. After the ceremony ended that day, I didn't plan to return to the prosecutor's office. But you did, because Chief Gant asked you to. You mean I... I... The body was found in the trunk of Mr. Edwards' car. I think it's obvious what happened. The body was moved by that car. Detective Goodman's body was carried in the trunk of Mr. Edwards' car? Yes. Unless, of course, you have another explanation, Chief. Why else would you have asked Mr. Edgeworth to transport evidence from a closed case? There's only one plausible explanation, to transport the body to your accomplice, Miss Lana Scott. Order, order, order. What's going on here? Is there no room for rebuttal to the defense's outrageous accusation? Think back to the photograph Miss Starr took at the prosecutor's office. This was not, this was a this was a not a photo 
of the body being stuffed in the trunk to be taken away. It was exactly the opposite. It's the photo of the body being taken from the trunk. Chief Gant, please say something. I believe... Your time's up. My time's up? Sorry, Raido, but I'm having lunch with the District Attorney's General this af after this. We have to get going if we're to make it in time for the early okay. special. But the cross-examination isn't finished yet. Remember what I told you earlier? A police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Like the right to refuse to testify. I'm invoking that right now. What? That's not the right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. So you're going to just run away after all this? Run away? Don't make me laugh, Worthy. I stabbed old Goodman. That's what you're saying, right? But if you had any conclusive evidence, you would have presented it by now. Well, I... You think I had Lana dispose of the body? If so, then show your proof and get it over with. I'll say it again, Mr. Wright. Damon Grant, Gant, is the current chief of police. This court will not tolerate any accusations against him without concrete proof. Well, Mr. Wright, Your Honor, do you have concrete proof? Proof that Chief Gant murdered Detective Goodman and made Miss Guy dispose of the body. Of course I do. Never mind. I made a mistake. Okay. I have no proof yet. It's no use showing evidence I'm not even sure of myself. No, Your Honor. At present, I have no conclusive evidence. Hmm. See ya, G. In that case, this court is forced to penalize you for the allegations against the chief. What? Here's a tip. Never gamble what you can't afford to lose, Rido. It seems that Lady Luck was on my side again today. Okay, Aji, I'll leave the rest to you. I warned you earlier, Mr. Wright. This is an affront to the senior officer in our nation's law enforcement. What? Objection! Lady Luck, hmm? Maybe we should have a word with her. Mr. Edgeworth, what do you mean? There's no lady who knows the real truth behind this trial. We haven't yet had the honor of hearing her testify. A lady who would know the truth. Another witness. In the absence of conclusive evidence, there's only other method of proof is testimony. But Chief Gant has invoked his right to refuse to testify. There's still someone else. One more witness who can answer all the questions. Raised in this trial, someone right in this very room. Mr. Edgeworth, who is this person? Hmm. Why are you asking me, Your Honor? Have you forgotten? The defense is the one calling the witnesses today. 
Mr. Wright, does such a witness exist? She may not be willing to tell the truth, but we can't stop now. Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls for... Lana Sky. She was in the underground parking lot at 5.15 p.m. on February 21st. Her task to dispose of the victim's body. In accordance with a certain someone's order, Mr. Edgeworth, the prosecution has no objections, Your Honor. Very well, the court will now take its final recess, recess for the day. In 15 minutes, we will reconvene to hear the defendant's testimony. This court will now be in... Hold on. Chief Gant, I thought you were going to eat. Listen good, Lana. He's talking to Lana. I don't think you need me to tell you this, but if you accept Mr. Wright's claims, there will be terrible consequences. Sorry, I thought I was just pissed, pissed at. There will be terrible consequences. That's right. Your sister will be found guilty for Neil Marshall's murder. This isn't good. Of course, you'd never support such an outrageous claim anyways, right? Just something to think about. Alright then. I've got a lunch date to meet. Okay, if there aren't any further objections, this court is now in recess. February 25th, Defendant Lobby. Man, this is taking a long time. Look, looks like we managed to stay in the game. Yeah, thanks to your help, Edgeworth. That chief, he's something else, eh, pals? Detective Gumshoe. <laughs> I'm not a detective anymore. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Ah, don't worry, I've already decided where to work now. At your office. My office? Sure. I'll take the place of that top-knotted girl you used to work with. Could he mean... Maya? Still, looks like we're all out of mood now. Chief Gant's done it again. How is it he always gets the upper hand? It's not fair, he uses the right to refuse to testify. Settle down, right? Remember what the judge said. But Chief, that's not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. Risks, what did he mean by that? It's simple. If the Chief refuses to testify, the opposite also holds true. You mean he forfeits his right to say anything, too? Emma, are you okay? Yeah, when I came to, I was in the medical office. I've been listening to the trial from the gallery. So she heard everything that's been going on. Emma, I'm sorry for what I said before. No, don't be. It was the truth. You know, it's funny. I almost feel somehow relieved. Relieved. Yeah, now I finally know what really happened. To think that all this time, my sister was being blackmailed by a terrible man. And she did it all just to protect me. Ever since her appointment as chief prosecutor, everyone knew her, who knew her said she changed. Perhaps it was easier that way for her. What do you mean? What do you think I mean? To follow Chief Gant's orders? She must have shut herself up in deep inside. To force herself to do anything and everything the Chief told her to do. That must be why she became so cold. It was all my fault. It's all because I, I murdered Mr. Marshall. Hey, don't go blaming yourself now. If you want to blame anyone, blame society, pal. Chief Gant may be able to fool everyone else with his forgery, but he can't fool my memory. I remember now, I knocked Mr. Marshall into that armor. I... I see. Well, we'd better get back. It's time for the final act. 
Emma, why don't you wait to... No. I'm going with you. I want to be there. When Lana tells the truth. Let's go, right? It's time to end this.